Hey guys and go girl girl goals. <laughs> what was that about? Hey guys and girls, I hope you're all well. Bored now back with you on this video. I will be talking about the latest episode of It's a Sin. It is episode four and uh, another very good episode. I would probably say if I was picking a weakest episode of the first four, um, then uh, this is probably the weakest, but it it's still really good. It's, it's not like it's bad or anything. Um, there is one particular like plot in it which I maybe wasn't so keen on, which I'll talk about in a moment, but, but still very, very strong stuff, very good again. And there's one more episode left, which, which if you're in the UK and watching it weekly on Channel 4, it airs next year. Next, I almost said next year, next week, and I know it's going to be showing sometime soon later in the year on HBO Max if you're in the US, so look out for it if you have HBO Max. So really good stuff again. I guess the main focus is Richie in this episode because it continues his sort of like anxiety and dilemma from last week from the fact that he in the end he, he kind of was too afraid to get AIDS tested and of course with with the what happened to Colin at the end of last week so the, it sort of cut to him and his sort of expression and really regretting not getting AIDS tested and I think overall because he was the very cynical one of the group he was like completely against this idea you know saying AIDS is a conspiracy against homosexual and uh, sexuals and, and all that it, then it's probably hit him the hardest what's been happening of the group and and it's made him really think about it but yeah i think his plot is the, the central plot in this episode I, I i would say and part of it's about his anxiety getting inside his head um and he's sort of um, going through all these different ideas of of AIDS and what it is and, and how it affects you. <laughs> Can it be defeated? And, and there are some lighter touches in there with him sort of... Um, it's like a sort of a, a fantasy in his head type scene with, um, you know, imagining all these different ways to kill AIDS, basically. So he's imagining, like, speaking... Because I, I think he has what, what a real telephone call just on one of the advice lines. And it's almost like he's worked himself up into trying to find an alternative way of, of tackling AIDS. If, if he's because he's just too afraid to sort of confront it and go to hospital if, if, if it proves that he's got AIDS. So it's almost like he's talking hypothetically, but and that seems a little more, you know, comedic in tone, because it's talking, you know, he goes through all these different things, like, you know, drinking bleach and what have you to say, get rid of it, and different things. It actually becomes a little bit gross, that scene. But anyway, it's getting into his mindset, the episode actually opens with this striking sort of scene and and this this ad which the BBC aired during during the time when obviously AIDS was first becoming better known and it's an ad that even I remember now I I'm not sure if it's if I remember it because I just have a memory of it from the 80s. I should point out I was very young in the 80s. I was born in 1980, so I probably don't remember that much about the 80s. Um, or if I've just seen it, you know, shown later on, the ad, you know, shown on like a, a TV special which was covering this period. In, I think that's probably more likely, but... It's an iconic sort of ad. It's it sort of stands out, and it's it's one of those ads which is like really sort of over the top and dramatic, and it has a science fiction type feel to it. You've got like AIDS appearing in big sort of letters, and it's just one of those images of the eighties that stands out, and it's also one of these sort of images that kind of says that the people behind the ads they just don't have a clue and they don't really 
I mean, whether you would go as far to say, well, they're just stirring up fear on on purpose, you know, because they feel threatened by this thing and they're just being quite sort of snobby about it kind of thing and dismissive, but... Or, or whether it's just, yeah, they're a bit clueless and this is their idea to get awareness out there, but it's probably not the most <laughs> sensitive ad in the world. Let's put it that way, but it's it's one of those... It is, you know, if you're of a certain age, you remember the 80s, you, you're going to remember the ad, I would say. And it's sort of this interest in thing where the characters are sitting around watching the ad and they've they've obviously I'm not sure if it's part of a program actually or if it's just an ad but you you're sort of a lot of people from the 80s would would remember it anyway and they're watching it and having this reaction and at the same time it cuts to Richie's like family his mother and dad and they're watching the ads and they're like sort of whatever because I mean at, at this point they don't have any idea that Richie is homosexual and could potentially get this disease and they sort of switch over and you know strike it lucky comes on Michael Barrymore and his mum's like oh I like him sort of things so again a, a lighter sort of scene but it's just this this interest in transition between the two things and, and the fact that obviously at, at this point the parents and Richie's family don't have any idea. So that's going to become important later on in the episode. So actually this opening makes a lot of sense. Um, but yeah, one of the early scenes is that another person close to them, this guy called Nick, who I don't think we've ever met, unless he sort of pops up in, in the pub in the scene in another episode, but he he has, you know, recently died of HMV, and they go to his funeral, and his sort of boyfriend, long-term boyfriend, stands up and sort of makes a scene and kind of confronts the mother, and, because the priest is, like, reading through all his kind of... his. Well, well, accolades or, or how he'll be remembered and, you know, his boyfriend stands up and points out, yes, but, but he was, you know, he, he was he, he was gay, we were in a relation and really quite confrontational, well, understandably so in a way because he says later than, than the mother, you know, was, was in denial and denied this this side of his life and, and burned his stuff when he died and this kind of thing but Richie's particularly is quite conflicted and tells him to sit down this isn't the time and, and all that um, and I think it shows you how it does sort of blur the lines and how there is kind of it, it's not all sort of black and white you, you can understand where Richie's coming from in this, although you you appreciate the sentiment of, yeah, he was gay, and this side of his life is being denied, and you know he he had a boyfriend that that should be mentioned. Also, at the same time, his mother's there; she's really emotional, and it's maybe not the place to get confrontational, even though the sentiment has a lot of value to it. So I think Richie does have a point in that scene but the drama sort of continues outside you know after the funeral and basically we see that Jill and the rest of them have organized this protest in London which is coming up which is going to be how the episode ends and Richie is starting to call on the whole protest thing he I think partly because of his just his anxiety around AIDS and what have you and how he's kind of trying to juggle that along with have having a life and he's kind of like does everything have to be about protest and making this and and I think you can see Richie's point of view although it's definitely you definitely very emotive towards yeah you should go out and protest you know this is important stuff and we're being denied this, that that kind of thing. So Richie's just 
a bit lost in this episode and a bit, you know, uncertain about what to do. He's obviously trying to balance his acting career. We we also find out then him and Jill at this point because they obviously he's got some acting roles. She's I'm a well, yeah, we've seen her have the odd sort of acting gig as well, and then they've got enough enough money now to buy their buy the flat, basically the flat where they all live. And we ju we just see some of the compromises again when Richie goes to the interview at, at you know at the uh, housing place because he's asked questions about his sexuality. He's asked if he's homosexual. He's asked if he's got you know HIV. Things that obviously should shouldn't matter and shouldn't have anything to do with it, but. Obviously, the implication is that if he says yes to any of these questions, they're probably not going to give them the house. So he kind of feels he has to lie. And I think it's a big theme of this episode, that sort of compromise, and that you are a bit compromised. And, you know, at this point, with things not being very progressive when it comes to homosexuality and obviously this, this virus, then... I think there are, st you know, it's maybe slow progress sort of thing where Richie thinking about his career and thinking about buying a house and stuff has to make certain compromises or at least feels he has to to sort of get ahead and not, not ruin his, his like chances. And Jill's sort of caught in the middle because she's sympathetic to both sides, but I think, yeah, this, this idea of compromising your true identity and having to lie and stuff it is is a big theme of this episode because we see that sort of with Roscoe's plot as well. But ultimately what happens is is we, we get, again, get this sort of like um, transfer from, from a, you know, a lighter sort of plot or seen into something a lot more darker, and that's when Richie finally realizes that he may have HMV and um, HMV. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. So uh, schoolboy error, and then I'll try to make a HIV, HIV, HMV. Sorry, sorry. Um, it's a sh it's a music store in this country, by the way, Americans. If you didn't get that. Okay. HIV. Yes, that's the one. He realizes he might have it because he's he's got like an extra role in in Doctor Who basically. And that's a funny little scene because it we see the dialects and stuff and it recaptures that the feel of like the 1980s version of Doctor Who and he's he's got a gig as an extra on on, on an episode. But it's when they're like not filming and someone on set who's like I think he's like doing his makeup or something or helping him out of the the whatever it is doing something anyway and he's up close to him and and he realizes like a mark on on his it's either his face or his neck and and that's what compels Richie to to go and get tested and and he gets the bad news that news and he has AIDS and you just see his mindset, just how dejected he is and how he's worried. He sort of says it's it's a death sentence type thing. And the doctor's, you know, trying to calm him down and trying to say you should have people around you at this point. And I guess it's a little journey Richie goes on for the rest of the episode because initially he goes into panic mode and sort of goes into hiding in a way because he goes back home and it's very awkward because he still hasn't told his family that he is gay so it makes telling them that he's got the virus even harder really than that he could potentially die and there's some awkward scenes obviously is his like mother particularly is pleased to see him his dad is the same awful person he normally is really he has a dig about his acting career because he says you know someone local said you were really good in a play but she also said you only got 10 minutes and obviously 
the people cost minutes in the play get more money and so get more money and, and it's just his way of again putting down Richie's you know choice of career in a way and there's this sort of awkward stuff because obviously Richie's not not in 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 the best frame of mind and and not in the mood to pull up with you know his his dad's abuse basically. So at one point when he sort of made the family dinner, he decides to go out and and go down the local pub and and his dad's just like yeah well you can sit here and you know spend ten minutes and and he tells him to fuck off basically which he can't blame him considering the sort of digs the father has been making since he's got there. And so Rick, Richie just sort of walks out and um, he goes down the pub and again, I think we see that even though he's gone back home, he really doesn't feel like he's at home anymore because he's in this environment where nobody knows his secret. Um, although one person does, which is revealed in this scene because he... He starts talking to someone he went to school with who's working at this pub. And it's basically the only person he knows. So, so they have a catch up and start talking. And obviously Richie talks about his like career and then, then he's like a virgin in sort of actor. And we get little moments like Richie imagining putting the Pet Shop Boys on, you know, that that. Go West, which was a, a big gay anthem, I, I think, in the 80s. But again, it's sort of in his head. He's, he's not braving. He's just imagining having the freedom of playing. Playing that in this environment where basically people might might not be the most supportive of, of that sort of song and, and might actually give him stick for playing it sort of thing. I, I think that's meant to be the idea. But he, he does have these exchanges after the pub closes like his friend gives him a lift and they have some nice moments together but also some really awkward moments a lot like when his friend basically knows that he's gay he's like cottoned on to it and and he's not one of the bigoted assholes basically he's He's fine with it. He has no problem. You know, he, he does make an awkward comment about as long as you don't give me AIDS. But that's that's as shitty as as he gets. Really, <laughs> apart from that, he's he's a pretty solid down the line sort of guy, and he doesn't really give. There's a bit of banter, but he, he doesn't give um, Richie any shit, and they get on well, and he's supportive. And it's actually Richie who starts acting quite weird in the scene. He sort of just flirts with him because he says, you know, I really fancied you. And it, he just goes a bit far. And um, it sort of reminded me a, a bit like the Colin scene in hospital last week. I guess that was more because of the disease advancing with Colin. But in this case, I think it's Richie just being quite unhappy and a bit miserable and isolated. So he's just going a bit far and crossing a line, especially since this guy is, like, really, really nice to him and really cool. And, you know, they're, they're just having a bit of fun catching up. So that does make the scene more awkward. But it's still a positive scene. It's still a nice sort of moment for Richie reconnecting with this old school friend talking about past you know the past at school and stuff and and the guy's like really really nice about his career saying well I don't think we'll see you around here much because you're gonna take off you're gonna be like going to Hollywood the next James Bond and that and it, it it's a powerful moment in the episode because I think Richie gets really melancholic about it because obviously in his mind he's probably not going to survive to live his dreams. So I think it's almost this thing of this this you know deadly virus um, can suddenly wipe out a young life like we obviously saw with Colin last week and it, it can wipe away these dreams. And suddenly, I think in Richie's mind, 
it sort of makes his passion to become a star or to become a big name actor even more even more so it's like he almost values it more because he realizes it could get swept away if he doesn't survive the virus so it's that thing of before maybe he was cruising along a bit more because he's he's obviously young he he knows that he's got you know or or in theory he had many years ahead of him his whole life and you know there's plenty of time to make it in the movie so i think it's that thing of when you suddenly learn this sort of news and you've got a life threatening illness and things do maybe become a bit more important to you or a bit more urgent i think also there's this this idea of he meets up with this friend from his past and that he's just kind of still stuck in this kind of dead end town and he's he's working in the local pub and so this idea of you know kind of dreamers in like a small town this idea of you know how sometimes you do romanticize a bit more you dream a bit more when you're in these sorts of surroundings whereas if you're in maybe more glamorous surroundings or or a city with more opportunities then I guess maybe you take it more for granted a bit more I, I guess that's only natural but it's a nice moment between them when the friend is supportive of Richie and sort of bigs him up really and there's a good visual moment actually where, where Richie when he gets out of the car and they've said goodbye he goes in front and the headlights are on and he sort of does you know a bit of dancing in front of the car and sort of raises his fist it's a re really good moment um and it's this real real sort of moment of defiance from Richie is almost taking this opportunity to say yeah I will be a star you know screw the AIDS and that plays in into the end when he finally shows up and and he actually goes to the protest and him and Roscoe initially aren't at the protest, so I'll talk about Roscoe in a minute, but Richie basically shows up, and it's when, because they, they protest at, like, this pharmaceutical headquarters, and the, the whole thing is that they're protesting the idea of pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals, I'm sorry. <laughs> you get what I'm saying uh, that they're making money off the virus basically so that's what the whole protest is and they lay down in the street and it's a whole you know demonstration thing and th thing and it's a beautiful moment of unity but it's you know things come to the boil when the police come in and they like basically manhandle them and, and at one point Jill is kind of like violently attacked with, with an, a, a, a baton a, a Britannia I'm not quite sure what you I know in America that they're called nightsticks it's it's the equivalent of a nightstick but yeah really br brutal and they're sort of all arrested and put in the back of the van and you get this divided sort of like crowd on the streets like there's a couple of younger people supporting them and then there's a couple of other people being more abusive and negative and sort of cheering on the police in a way but it's at the moment where they're all arrested and put in the back of the van where Richie comes out with the news because he's bleeding so he tells like Roscoe not to not to touch him um and that's when he comes out that he, yeah he's got AIDS but he actually says but I'm going to defeat it so he's had this nice little you know arc and turn around during the episode so last episode next week so it will be interesting to see where they go with Richie whether he will ultimately overcome it and of course he still hasn't told his family so I'm guessing that that will maybe happen in the last episode as well and the other big plot is with Roscoe, who is still following on from the last episode, is still working for, for the Stephen Fry character, the, the rich sort of white guy. Um, 
And this plays into Roscoe's thinking in the episode because at one point before the protest, Jill asks him, are, are you going to come? And and he's, he's basically not. And he's partly because of what happened to Colin last week. He, Roscoe is... Roscoe is kind of saying, you know, he was a nice guy, he kept his head down, he, he did things right, he, you know, he worked hard, and that, that sort of thing, and look what happened. And so Roscoe is kind of saying, you know, you, you've got to play the game in a way to get ahead, and that, that's your only way to survive and stuff. And and he actually he hasn't told you or anyone else in the house what he's doing because he's making all this money because of the Fry character being rich and stuff and paying him for services. But so Roscoe goes off to this thing and he's basically being used as almost like a quota type thing because Margaret Thatcher is is gonna pay this businessman played by Fry a visit and he basically decides to use Roscoe as as like a minority to, to kind of shut because he he basically is he's involved in a tech company and he just wants him to pretend to be like a delicate from from like an African country and there's this sort of ironic moments where that they've basically got Roscoe's like ethnicity, ethnicity wrong, or where he comes from. Is that they've got the wrong African country, um, and we see the Fry character getting all excited over Thatcher. Now they go a bit into goofy humor because when they're standing together and they're waiting for Thatcher to show up, um, like the Fry character actually has has an erection and and. Roscoe's like, oh, you've got an erection for Thatcher. And, but it's just this whole thing. I mean, like, the businessman is getting all excited and, you know, really wants to impress Thatcher. And it's the sort of thing where it's very, it's sort of quite comedic, but it's it's also quite sad and, and petty as well. And he's, he's getting this excited to see Thatcher. And it's at this moment where Roscoe realises that, yeah, he is compromising himself and this other guy is basically a suck-up and an idiot. <laughs> and, yeah, I don't want to do this. I don't want to compromise who I am to, to this extent. And th there's a bit of a comedy beat where he, he, he sort of basically pees in <laughs> in like the, the tea which they're going to serve to her, but... I think this is my weakest part of the episode. I, I first of all, I think it's a bit too sort of rushed. It's a bit too for, forced to get Roscoe to the place where he's going to end up going to the protest. I think it's also one of these awkward moments where you have a real historical person there, but obviously she's not really there because this is a scripted drama and we we see the back of her at one point we see her walking down the hall but it's from the back so it feels maybe a little bit tacked on just to you know have that sort of reference to like the politics of the era and, and they do that thing of as i said showing the back of a real person and not 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 seeing their front and stuff so I think it's the weakest part of the episode. I think they either should have done a bit more of it or with it or maybe, yeah, maybe not had it. It obviously shows another kind of side to things and, you know, Roscoe as, as a minority in the 80s and stuff. So so it has value. It just wasn't as as compelling as the Richie stuff or, or as some of the other stuff we've seen in, in the series, but... There, yeah, but that that's pretty much the episode. There's sort of quite an am amusing scene as well because Ash has got uh, a job like working at a school. I think he works in the library, 
And there's just a scene where one of the teachers or the headmaster, whoever it's meant to be, is, is asking him to, um, yeah, to to look up um, any or look for any books with homosexual material in. And Ash is obviously very awkwardly trying to conceal his then he's he's gay himself, but. He sort of comes up with this story where he actually says to the teacher, there's nothing, there's no, over all these decades, all these like years and centuries and, you know, all these, <laughs> in all these books, there's not one mention of homosexuality. Um, but in reality, he actually said, there's two books here, basically. And I can't remember who the author was, but it's just this sort of funny little scene, which is, Again, has just this little sense of of unease, but the fact that yeah, they would actually. We also find out Richie is a Tory voter in, in this, which which is sort of interesting. I guess that's maybe to balance things out, but he actually makes this contrary sort of argument that Thatcher was was right to to kind of. I don't, I don't know if this actually happened. I'm assuming maybe it did, considering the attitudes at the time, but that she, she actually sort of called for children's books not, not to have, like, homosexual characters or this sort of thing. And Richie's like, well, no, I think she, she's actually right, because those are for five years old, so we get a bit of a contrary point there, but... Yeah, good good episode once again, and, and the Richie stuff particularly was good in this episode, so it's pretty great once again. So if you've been following It's a Sin, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'll be back next week with the final episode of the series, so I look forward to seeing that. But thanks guys, like and subscribe if you are new to the channel. You can contact me on Twitter if you look up Keith Beard. And also if you ding the bell on YouTube, that will give you notifications when I go live or when I put up a new video. But I'll see you guys later. Thanks. Goodbye.